There's no hiding from your grace I can't deny your half of mine And it's unreal and chase I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until your love took over to share with anyone at all but did you know that God calls us to be his helping hand on earth maybe you are like me when I was younger and you did not feel like you can give to other people so let me tell you something Jesus loves it when we are kind and giving with his creations now before we talk more about that let's pray dear Jesus thank you so much we are so excited to hear more about your story and prepare our heart, prepare our mind, Lord Jesus, so we can concentrate and really get everything today. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, 
verses 1 through 5. As Sarah entered the cafeteria, bagged lunch in hand, Grace waved her over. Hey, Sarah, we figured out the service project thing. Sarah slid into the seat beside Grace, across from Cassie and Rochelle. All three of them sported expensive salon haircuts and manicures. Sarah tried to smooth down her own frizzy hair. She was glad that St. Joseph's School requires uniforms because at least her clothes looked like what everyone else was wearing. Oh, right, the project for social studies? Miss Moss had required that individual groups find a service project to do during the holiday season. I looked through Miss Moss's list. This one's perfect. Grace showed her tablet screen to Sarah. Helping a refugee family? That's a great idea. Yeah, we can just buy them stuff from this list and send it to their new home. Where is the... Sarah looked at the table again, trying to decipher the name on the page. Where is the KMB family living? Somewhere over on the east side, like Grove or some place with those rundown houses. Sarah swallowed hard. She lived on the east side when she'd moved in with her grandma. It was only because of a scholarship that she was able to attend St. Joseph's School. It says here the family needs three sets of sheets. Oh, I know. You've seen those ads for tufted owl sheets? They're supposed to be the best. Sarah's eyes widened. Aren't those sheets like $200? That's cool. My dad will give me the money. They need dishes. I'll order a full set from Macy's. My mom has a platinum card there. I'll get them a TV. Perfect way to learn English, right? Enter a credit card number and boom, service project done. The girls turned to Sarah, who avoided their eyes by staring at the list of needs on the tablet. Hey, Sarah, what are you going to send? They need winter coats. I saw these awesome tailored down jackets on sale for like $125. Um, I don't know. I'll text you all later. That evening at dinner, Sarah barely touched her spaghetti. Grandma peered across the table, her eyes bright under her wiry white hair. Now, what's wrong, Sarah? Oh, it's this service project I have to do for school. We're supposed to help this refugee family that's moving into a house over on the Grove. The Kayembe's? That sounds like a lovely idea. Yeah, but everyone else is ordering stuff for them. Expensive sheets and TVs and things. The only money I have right now is for bus fare. What am I going to give? You don't have to have a lot to give a lot. You didn't answer my question. Grandma smiled and reached for the worn Bible that always sat on the kitchen table. No, but St. Paul will. Sarah knew that once Grandma got a scripture passage stuck in her mind, there was no stopping her from reading it. Okay, fine. I'm listening. Let's see. It's right here in 2 Corinthians. Paul was writing to a group of churches. We want you to know about the grace that God has given to the churches in Macedonia. They have suffered a great deal, but in their suffering, their joy was more than full. Even though they were very poor, they gave very freely. In fact, they gave even more than they could. Completely on their own, they begged us for the chance to share in serving the Lord's people in that way. But that's still talking about money. The churches gave money. Listen with your heart. They gave from what they had, and they did it with joy. Well, what I have is not money. But you've got other things. Okay, I'm good at baking. I know how to use the bus and get around. I have time, I guess. Grandma beamed and her face crinkled. All good things. Reluctantly, Sarah smiled back. Okay, I'll make a list. Next morning, Sarah's friends crowded around her locker. Hey, have you decided what you're going to buy? Well, I thought maybe the Kayembe family needs more than just stuff. Like how? Maybe they need help. You know, like finding the library, figuring out the bus system. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. But I do. And I googled and found a number for their caseworker. And she said we could help the Kayembe's decorate their new home for Christmas. Oh, that's a really cool idea. I found this awesome video that shows how to make Christmas ornaments from salt dough that you shape and bake and paint. You all could come to my place and help. Sure, that'd be great. I mean, it's a tiny apartment kitchen and all. You tell us what to do, we'll do it. Sarah breathed a sigh of relief. Maybe she couldn't send $200 sheets, but she could use her time and creativity and even her grandma's tiny kitchen to help welcome a new family to her neighborhood. Wow, you see, 
Even when the church of Macedonia were unfortunate, they still gave donations to those who were even more unfortunate freely. How amazing is that? We have a God that is so kind and generous, so we can strive more to be like Him. And as kids, we don't have to donate through money. We can even donate through lending our friends and family an ear to listen to their problems. Or we can be a shoulder for them to cry on. Or we can even use any talent we have wherever it is, whether it's singing, writing, or even drawing to cheer them up. Always remember, we give not because we want or have to, but because we get to. It's key passage time. Our key passage comes from 2 Corinthians 8 verse 1 to 2. Now, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in His kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles and they are very poor, but they are also filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. It's quest time! Are you ready kids? Let's go! First question, who wrote to the church of Macedonia about their good doings? Is it Paul or Elizabeth? Yep, it was Paul! Second question, which people did the church of Macedonia donate to? The people of Jerusalem or the Galileans? Yup, it was the people of Jerusalem. Third question, what does God appreciate from His people? Was it when we love His creation or when we are generous to His creation? It's a trick question, isn't it? But yes, it was both of them. Good job, everyone. Well, that's it for today, kids. Thank you for spending your Sunday with us. Remember, we have our daily contents from Mondays to Fridays and Sundays. Well, we'll see you later in our Zoom classes, okay? Before we go, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for teaching us to be generous. You love us first, so we want to love others too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, kids.